Let me set the stage for you. It's Saturday night and you're chilling out watching Cartoon Network, when all of a sudden you see this dystopian spaceship and this super chill sounding robot, who's talking to you about this neat little thing from Japan called anime. It sounds like he's talking gibberish. Inuyasha, Yu Yu Hakushu, bo 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 bo? Well, my friends, you have just entered the world of Toonami. Good guys still wear black, only Toonami. But first, let's talk about today's cozy sponsor, Lappin. Lappin is a 2D platformer starring a group of brave young rabbit adventurers. These five rabbits used to live comfortably under the park, but construction forced them to leave their beloved hull. Help your new furry friends explore this stunning and beautiful world with precise control. Hop your way through six main chapters and eight previous episodes with your new friends. I had such a cozy time with this game. The delightful visuals, the beautiful music, tight gameplay, and getting to know each of the rabbits throughout my journey always kept a smile on my face. Enjoy your adventure at your own pace with 7 to 12 hours worth worth of platforming and storytelling. There's even an easy mode you can switch to at any time for players who just want to take things at their own pace. The game is available now on Steam, or if you click that link in the description, you can get the game for 20% off during Steam's autumn sale. So again, please click that link down below to hop in with Lappin. Toonami is a late night TV block that airs on Cartoon Network on Saturdays, where the block would showcase anime. It wasn't my first exposure to anime considering Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh existed, but it was definitely mine and many other people's first exposure to the more adult-tailored shows. Animes with violence, light swearing, and uh, fan service? Whenever Toonami would air it, it had this really cool and chill vibe to it. We're in space on this cool spaceship, there's catchy lo-fi music in the background, AMVs that would play, all presented by our lovable host, Tom. So here's the deal. Life doesn't always want to be your friend. Sometimes it'll feel like life wants to hurt you. But get back on your feet, because it's the getting back up that counts. Short for Toonami Operations Module, Tom was a cool robot who'd welcome us to his ship, introduce the shows we'd be watching, tell us a little bit about them. Tom is so lovable. He's like programmed to be the coolest friend who just wants to watch anime with you and help you out when he can. Now, the history of Toonami is pretty crazy. Having constantly be cancelled, brought back for special occasions, rebooted, you name it. So today I want to dive into the amazing world of Toonami, talk about the nostalgia and animes that defined it. So, hey, if you made it this far, I hope you're along for the ride. Let's get going. Tom 1 made his debut on July 13, 1999. This officially kicked off the Tom era of Toonami. For context, in 1997 through 1999, Toonami was primarily a block for action cartoons, but primarily western shows like Thundercats and Johnny Quest. The show was hosted by Moltar of Space Ghost, until Tom 1 came along and had the block focus on anime specifically. So, it's a brand new Toonami, but the mission objectives remain the same. My name is Tom. Now, if you think Tom is nothing more than a talking head to the show during commercials, you'd be wrong. Because from 1999 up until present day to day, Tom has his own stories and arcs that go on throughout the years. Tom 1 ruled from 1999 to 2000. So the shows that aired under his belt were all the classics. Voltron, Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, and Sailor Moon, just to name a few. These shows are the essentials. If you're an American anime fan just seeing these shows on TV, it was such a treat. I can't imagine how weird it must feel, though, to have a late-night program show something like Sailor Moon. I always associated late-night TV shows with adult programming that wouldn't be appropriate. Sailor Moon is one of the most popular and beloved anime of all time. The show follows a ditzy and somewhat annoying teenage girl named Serena, her totally real Japanese name along with her friends Amy, Ray, Lita, and Mina, who are all normal high schoolers by day, and superheroes by... also day sometimes. What a total jerk calling me a meatball head still! He sure is cute! It's a really charming show, but as a kid, I just didn't get it, and it didn't help that it was a... <laughs> girl show, and I'm a boy! Who loves Powerpuff Girls. But there's no denying the popularity of the show, being a cornerstone of Toonami until 2002. Only Toonami. Got it! So, if I didn't like the girl show, would I like the boy show? 
Yeah, I really wanted to get into Dragon Ball back in the day, but like I said, I just didn't quite understand adult anime yet. I had ADHD American brain. Shows needed to be quick and snappy to keep my attention. So when an anime came along that would normally have like a hundred plus episodes full of dialogue and explanation, it was too much. But again, that's just me. All of my friends love Dragon Ball. Heck, I learned the Kamehameha just from seeing them do it all the time. And I absolutely adored the art style and character design. It's the first time I really saw something like this. And this show made me fall in love with spiky-haired anime characters. Power up. Only Tsunami. Tsunami at this time really liked robots. Voltron, Ronin Warriors, and G-Force Guardians of Space. I guess because Tom and Toonami as a whole was space-themed, they wanted shows to match the vibe. Heck, now that I think of it, Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball also involve space and aliens. Huh. These shows also aren't my personal cup of tea, but I just love everything about 90s anime. The vibe, the style, and of course, the cheesy voice acting. Telepathy? Is this some kind of joke? Ronin Warriors in particular has a really charming vibe to it. Maybe it's just because I'm looking back on it as an adult and there's nostalgia I have for, you know, 90s anime. Will the Ronin Warriors have the endurance to stand together to save humanity? Now before we talk about more anime, we need to come back to Tom 1. He was a very lovable host and it's clear Cartoon Network liked him and wanted to experiment with the character. Tom 1 would also review video games. The Dreamcast finally came out. We checked out Soul Calibur from Nam. They're really short and not that in-depth, but it's still really interesting to see this, seeing what games were coming out at the time and what had the most hype. This is one of the best fighters we've ever seen. Battle 1, fight! Yeah. Visually, it blows away any other fighting game. Again, stepping in this time machine is so charming. One second you're watching an anime, and the next you get a game review for a Dreamcast game. It's a fully three-dimensional fighter with open environments. 14 fighters, six of them from Final Fantasy. Tom also had some co-hosts for Toonami, Sarah, the astral projection screen, and Clyde 50, another robot. All was going good in the world of Toonami. That is, until September 2000, when this amorphous red blob known as the Intruder invaded its way onto Tom's ship. Tom? Any readings? Uh, no. What then? Please be careful. This was a big deal, literally being a multi-part special event. Each quote-unquote episode was short, but still very impactful and tense. We followed Tom exploring his ship looking for the intruder. The ambiance is really good, especially for what was just supposed to be a commercial bumper character. It honestly still holds up over 20 years later. The CGI is obviously not the greatest, but they work with it atmospherically to the point where you don't notice it. Unless you want to be a picky loser. Tom eventually comes face to face with the intruder, trying to blast at it, but it's completely ineffective. And unfortunately, Tom 1 is inevitably consumed by the intruder and destroyed. However, this isn't really the end of Tom as a whole, because his mind and memories were transferred into a new body. A new, sleek design simply known as... Tom 2. Alright, let's get this show on the road. The intruder latched itself onto the ship, where Tom 2 manages to detach that part of the ship and blow it up, sending the intruder into space with the body of Tom 1. Where I'm sure we'll never see them again. Tom 2's design is very sleek and kind of what I recognized a little bit more as THE Tom. Everything from the big motorcycle slash Power Rangers helmet, the big hands, and cool new voice. He'd be the host from September 2000 to March 2003. I know how it is. Your day off, want to sleep it away. Well, Tsunami's changing on Three hours of the best action cartoons around. The network would continue to air new anime, still seemingly trying to stick with the space and alien theme, airing anime like Mobile Suit Gundam, Star Blazers, and Cyborg 009. I commend the network for sticking to the gimmick, although I've never heard of half these shows until working on this video. Cyborg 009 I think is about an evil black market full of cyborgs and robots to promote warfare or something? I'm not sure. All I do know though is that the main character's voice actor is 
definitely voice acting. Hey, who are you? Are those tanks? I can't breathe. You think this is some kind of a game? Come here! Bro sounds like me narrating my videos. Are you able to see which way they're coming? Well... Star Blazers is... God, I'm sorry. This is just so boring. I couldn't even finish episode one. It's way too slow paced. It feels like a cartoon from the 70s and 80s. Oh, it is from the 80s. Uh, not for me. One of these shows that really stuck out to me, though, was The Big O. It's another giant robot anime, but the characters and setting are really interesting. The main character, Roger Smith, not that one, really reminds me of Bruce Wayne, both in his design and character attitude. I didn't think there were any nightingales in the city, but apparently that changed recently. Very confident and unnerved, the setting takes place in a seedy city, full of people who dress up and definitely live corrupt, rich lives. And the music that accompanies it is the perfect cherry on top. I see. Then Dorothy really is an android. She wasn't lying. Hell, when the giant robot stuff happens, I'm kinda taken back. I forgot what I was watching. Good show. Oh yeah, then there's the little show called Ham Taro that would air. This was definitely a step away from the space and alien stuff. Just watching cute hamsters do cute hamster stuff. It's such a weird show to have on late at night next to all this other stuff, which I really appreciate. Any funny ideas about her because she's one step away from falling head over a boss from me. No, I wouldn't do that to your boss. While I do commend Toonami for wanting to stick with a gimmick, with what type of anime they wanted to air, branching out to grab more potential viewers was definitely the way to go. 2003 would see the debut of shows like Yu Yu Hakushu and Ruroni Kenshin. Yu Yu Hakushu always intrigued me as a kid simply by its name. The show follows a young teenage delinquent named Yusuke who gets hit by a car trying to save a child. Yusuke is then revived by demons from the underworld and appointed to become an underworld detective, with him needing to solve all kinds of cases involving the paranormal, ghosts, demons, etc. It's a really fun concept and show. These characters are so likable and I love their designs. You can take their leader. I insist this fight be mine. Seriously, Hiei is like peak character. Despite the show being about detective work, it becomes more and more focused on fighting which I definitely won't complain about. The fighting in the show is intensely animated with so many iconic battles. Seriously, you need to watch this show. It's not the first ever shown in anime, but it's one of the earliest examples of it being done right, and to such an interesting and entertaining level. Ruroni Kenshin is a show I never watched, unfortunately. I feel terrible because I know this show is a classic, and I did watch a few episodes for this video, and yeah, I loved it. It's great, and I love all the sword fighting. I know the show is deeper than just sword anime, but I still need to catch up to truly appreciate it. Toonami was definitely starting to expand their horizons. We'd also get Dragon Ball GT, Duel Masters, a show that's apparently not Yu-Gi-Oh, but desperately wants to be. When Natural Snare destroys a player's creature, it increases that player's mana. For now, though, let's head back to the spaceship with Tom 2. Just like his previous form, Tom 2 was an aspiring YouTuber, giving game reviews. Basically, Bowser stole Princess Peach and you have to save her and, you know, the rest. Not the deepest game, but man, it's fun if you can get down with it. Yeah, this would continue to be a thing, but this time talking about more interesting games like Mario Sunshine, Paper Mario, and Animal Crossing. He's a raccoon and all the people are animals, but trust me, it grows on you. This is the crossover I never knew we needed. Just like the Intruder miniseries, Toonami would continue making shorts involving Tom 2, like the Lockdown multi-parter. The series actually tied in closely to the Lockdown game that was released online. Basically, Tom's ship has come across some identified objects and bodies, where Pete needs to save the ship and get rid of the intruders. Hello, this is the Absolution. We need your help. Please log on to Toonami.com. I have uploaded further instructions to the site. Again, it's nothing crazy, but it's not supposed to be. You just get this instead of a commercial, as well as promoting your new Flash game, which I'll gladly take. This era of Toonami broke viewership and website records, where Tom 2 would eventually reach his end in March 2003 via an online webcomic, simply titled 
end game. The website no longer has the comic, but you can easily find it online. In this story, a space pirate named Orcelot Rex breaks into Tom's spaceship looking to steal Sarah. Again, Tom's giant head assistant slash friend. Orcelot Rex manages to not only steal Sarah, but blow up Tom's ship. And with nothing left to lose, Tom too pursues the villain and manages to fight and defeat him. But at the cost of destroying his own body. However, not all hope is lost. The remains of Tom 2's body were found on the Orcelot Rex's ship by some friendly robots, who once again rebuilt Tom 2, turning him into the new and improved, you guessed it, Tom 3, who would take command of a brand new ship, the Absolution Mark II, where he would continue to host Toonami from March 2003 to March 2007, a whole four years. Next up, going to school is pretty tough. Not really, Tom. Well, it is when you're the class clown in a school full of ninjas. Now, this is the Tom that I personally grew up with. His design, his voice, his spaceship, everything about this era screams Toonami. This is where Toonami would really kick into second gear and find its groove. Shows like One Piece and Naruto made their debut here, where I feel like this was a lot of people's introduction to these beloved shonen. Luffy, it's good to see you, buddy. The One Piece dub they aired was done by four kids, so it was kind of weird watching what was essentially Diet One Piece for babies airing on the anime block that was meant for adults. So drink up, booger boy! However, this was my first exposure to the series, and since I was a kid when I saw it, the dub really appealed to me. All of the goofy and silly characters with their goofy and silly voices, whether it was appropriate or not. Please, you think your little dread scare me? I know this dub gets a lot of flack, but I feel like it deserves some kudos for bringing the show to America and still managing to create a fan base despite its terrible choices. Yes! Burn rubber. Only Tsunami on Cartoon Network. Naruto's English dub had a better reputation. Being done by anyone but four kids meant it was unedited and had a bit more of an edge to it. Do your worst! You're not gonna scare me away! Definitely felt like the more mature of the two at the time. I've wanted to dive into it, but starting an anime with over 500 episodes is a bit daunting. I say this as a One Piece fan that has almost a thousand episodes. I spent my Saturday evenings as a kid wanting to be inside so I could catch a new episode of One Piece. However, there would also be a certain anime playing before One Piece. One that kinda scared me and I never wanted to watch. I'd always see commercials for this show and was like, still absolutely confused as to what it was supposed to be about. No! You turned me into a carrot! Wah! So, in the year 3000X, the world is under the tyrannical rule of the Chrome Dome Empire. Yes, bald people who have initiated the hair hunt on all people that have hair. Enter Bobobo, bo 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 an eccentric weirdo with a giant blonde afro and magical nose hair that he can control like a whip to fight the bad guys. I want to see the second <laughs> show it to me! But I've never shown it to anyone before! Please don't ask me to do it! Bobo Bo isn't even the weirdest character in the show. There's the Jelly Jiggler and Softon, who's an ice cream man. I mean, hey, if you're someone who likes weird as hell animes that make zero sense, then this show is definitely for you. But I can't, because I've already told a home ec teacher that I'd be captain of the cooking team. Anyone want to try my corn chowder? No! You could literally just find a compilation on YouTube to see for yourself. Warning, though, you may become stupider. It's the nose mask! 3 plus 3 divided by the square root sign plus tangent minus C over A multiplied and divided by M plus 3 times 5 equals 8. Another anime I was exposed to through Toonami was Zatch Bell. A show definitely less weird than Bobobo, -Bo, but I'm not sure by how much. My name is Zatch Bell. Essentially, Pokemon, but instead of animals fighting, people make children fight, which is fantastic. I think that's what the show's about, at least. That's what was always happening when I was watching. <laughs> I love Zatch's design, this little boy that looks like a puppet and wears a dress. I'd make fun of him, but he can do this. It's a really fun action show with dorky and lovable characters. 
I think the reason I liked this show a lot when I was younger is because Zatch Bell was voiced by Debbie Derryberry. You know, Jimmy Neutron. He had two helpings of meatloaf for lunch and he had to go really, really, really bad. He's such an adorably dumb character. You always root for him whenever he has to fight. A sign of a good action anime is when you enjoy seeing the characters in more than just the fight scenes. Simply hanging out and talking is enjoyable enough. This school is probably filled with bullies, right? You can save all the other students from the bullies and make lots of friends! I also remember seeing promos for a show called The Prince of Tennis. This was before I knew about sports animes and how good they usually are. But at the time, when I saw a show about tennis, I lost my mind. What do you mean? Why would I watch this when I could watch a pirate crew fight an evil clown? I did check out an episode for curiosity's sake, and yep, it's tennis. As I mentioned earlier, Toonami was at the most popular it's ever been. So much so that Toonami themselves created an anime. Immortal Grand Prix. Immortal Grand Prix was a miniseries created by the network's producers. It was a five-part miniseries about racing cars that turn into mechs and fight. Of course. Personally, I never cared about cars, so this show never interested me, but man did Toonami promo the hell out of it. Every other commercial was telling you to watch this show. Saturday, November 5th at 10 p.m. And hey, it is really cool that Toonami made their own show for the network, and even released a PS2 game. Speaking of video games, Tom 3 is still reviewing them. Long story short, you look like Link, and you're off on your adventure. If you're new to the Zelda world, you start off small and pick up stuff along the way. Seriously, I never saw any of these on TV when I was watching. What were they, 3 a.m. game reviews or something? Anything and everything can be rolled into a ball. The bigger, the better. Sounds strange? Well, it is. I love that Tom is canonically a gamer. What a world we live in. Again, Tom 3 is what my brain immediately thinks of when I think Toonami. Alongside popular shows like One Piece and Naruto, Toonami would air Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Teen Titans, Justice League, and Samurai Jack, just to name a few. Toonami was killing it. Which is why it kind of surprised me when in 2007, Tom 3 would simply vanish. Yeah. Randomly in March 2007, Toonami would just introduce a brand new Tom. Tom 4. You guys ready to make the magic happen? I remember seeing this live and just being so confused. Why is Tom ugly as sin now? Seriously. It's not like they modernized him or upgraded his look in any way. He looks terrible. His big old bulgy eyes, disgusting yellow chest plates. He reminds me of another Tom. Thomas the Tank Engine. Along Tom 4 came Flash and D, two other hideous robots that nobody cared about. Tom 4 would also not be stationed in a spaceship or be anywhere near space. Their base was some building on a mysterious jungle planet. I guess the network wanted to ditch the space theme since their shows no longer focus on space, but it was yet again another dumb decision that took away a lot of Toonami's charm. I loved seeing the spaceship and dark atmosphere during commercials. It just felt cool. I also personally felt attacked. 2007 to 2008 was a terrible time for Cartoon Network all around. They stopped airing cartoons and focused on god-awful live-action shows, and now Tom 4? Seriously, changing the channel to Cartoon Network was one of the most miserable experiences during those years. In terms of programming, there really wasn't anything spectacular debuting during this era either. A lot of Pokemon and Bakugan. Toonami stopped being a cool place to discover new or hidden gems of anime, and was instead just used as a time slot to air safe programming. Heck, a lot of times they didn't even air anime anymore. You had an Iron Man animated movie, a Hellboy animated movie, Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo, a ton of Marvel cartoons since Iron Man just came out and was a massive hit. Superman! Doomsday! Premieres Saturday at 9pm! It seemed like Toonami wanted to focus on superhero cartoons. In the network's minds, anime was just a fad to them. And that fad was over. On September 20th, 2008, ironically enough, at an anime convention in Georgia, Cartoon Network announced that they would be cancelling the Toonami block due to low ratings. And that exact evening, Toonami would air its final broadcast, 
ending with a rerun of Samurai Jack at 10.30, where employees of Toonami would be sectioned off to work in other departments. If Toonami just ended with a Samurai Jack rerun, I would say it had a pretty pitiful death. But Cartoon Network did allow Tom Ford to give one final goodbye monologue to the viewers. After more than 11 years, this is Toonami's final broadcast. It's been a lot of fun, and we'd like to thank each and every one of you who've made this journey with us. Toonami wouldn't have been anything without you. Hopefully, we've left you with some good memories. So, until we meet again, stay gold. Bang. And just like that, Toonami was gone forever. At least, that's what we thought. On April 1st, 2012, Adult Swim aired the Toonami blog as part of their annual April Fool's prank. This year being the one where they showed The Room. Yeah, it was 2012 at the time, where quoting that movie wasn't completely played out yet. Having Tom, the guy who talks about anime, introduce The Room. There's definitely a silly little moment. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Oh, hi, Adult Swim. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have April Fool's. However, this prank was actually so nice to see, because the prank was, hey, remember Toonami? It's back! Airing shows like Dragon Ball Z, The Big O, Yu Yu Hakusho, all the classic anime that made everyone fall in love with Toonami. You may also notice that the host isn't Tom 4, but a more updated and cleaned up Tom 3, who'd simply be known as Tom 3.5, considering it's technically the same Tom 3 from back in the day. Although, Toonami would confirm that Tom 3.5 is a bit of an updated robot with very subtle changes in its physical design. The following day, Adult Swim posted on their Twitter page, simply stating, Want it back? Let us know. Hashtag bring back Toonami. Thank you for your passion and interest. Stay tuned. Then on April 8th, Adult Swim aired two bumpers, simply saying, We're listening, and we're looking into it. And finally, on May 16th, Adult Swim posted on their official Facebook page of all places that Toonami would be coming back. Toonami's back, bitches, and we've got an all-new lineup. Now, though, officially sharing a block with Adult Swim. Gone are all the children's programming like Powerpuff Girls and 4Kids dubs, and in its place are all-new exciting action anime. Inuyasha, Araka 7, Dead Man Wonderland, Cowboy Bebop, Ghost in the Shell, Toonami was back full force. And on October 6, 2012, Toonami would expand to a full six hours, adding more shows like Bleach and Soul Eater. 2012 was when I really got into anime. At the time, I was a high schooler, so instead of going to parties, I was watching this schoolgirl turn this guy into a scythe and use him to fight other school children. Soul Eater is the most 2000s anime, in my opinion. The best word to describe it is edgy, both figuratively and literally. The characters all have this angsty, cocky attitude towards everything. Their designs and clothes are just begging people to cosplay as them. And the whole show has this gothic Halloween feel to it. We follow these kids attending a Death Weapon Academy, where one kid is the user and the other can transform into weapons. It's a pretty silly show, honestly, but still holds up despite some of its dated nature. Okay, that's it, witch lady. Naked or not, I'm still gonna eat your soul now. I feel like this new era of Toonami really wanted to cement itself as the mature place to be. Dead Man Wonderland already doesn't sound like a pleasant time. This show's about a corrupt prison slash theme park. It's a corrupt place full of the most vile and disgusting people, where the prisoners are disgusting and the people running it are just as vile. Why won't any of you people listen to me? where we of course follow a young teenager who needs to learn to adapt and survive in this place. This was my first ever exposure to a more dark and depressing anime. Where are all the colors and cool special abilities? Seeing all this blood and the bleak world was honestly shocking to me back in the day. Maybe a tiny bit of levity every now and then, but the show is consistently depressing and violent. Tom 3.5 himself would also show a more mature side to him, being the first version of Tom to actually use profanity. Tsunami's back, bitches. 
He'd also give a lot of life advice, things like falling down seven times and getting up eight, as well as haters. We've all got one. It's the person who says that sucks no matter what you're doing. You know, advice that's more applicable to young adults. We all deserve better. Oh, and guess what? Tom 3.5 also, 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 also reviewed video games. I've been playing this game, Slender. It's free. Just find it online and settle in for one of the scariest games you'll ever play. I can't believe it. At this point, Tom's been doing this for over 10 years, and I've still never seen a single review. Slender's the scariest game I've ever played. God! The new Toonami was off to a great start, back with its original look and design, full of beloved anime that would keep a steady fan base. What happened to Tom 4, though? Well, we'd actually get a few bumpers with Tom 3.5 speaking to Tom 4 via satellite communication. Oh yeah, look, I know you said to keep it between us, but we might have to tell that story one day. Okay, whatever you think is best, bro. Take care of yourself. It's all up to you now. Alright, man. Take her easy. Good dude. That's so charming. I hope they can be friends forever. <laughs> Okay, now I know this looks bad, but I promise it's not. On April 27th, 2013, Toonami would introduce to the world Tom 5. Are you ready to begin? Oh yeah. I just gotta figure out how to run this new baby. Same old Tom, but yet again with another sleek and updated look. This update was surprisingly never explained. Similar to Tom 4, Tom 5 just showed up and... There you go, he's your new Tom, you need to love him forever. Tom 5 would actually be the longest Tom in commission, lasting from 2013 to 2019. The shows that would air during this time were once again amazing, and I wish I could go into a lot of these in depth, but we get off course from Toonami so quickly. Shows that aired under Tom 5's belt include Attack on Titan, Goren Logan, Sword Art Online, Space Dandy, Kill a Kill, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and one of my top 5 animes of all time, Hunter x Hunter. I actually got introduced to this show by Toonami. They were having some sort of marathon, I guess, airing episode 1, and it went on until like 3 in the morning, and I was hooked immediately. We follow a young boy named Gon, who learns that his father was a hunter, basically a professional and licensed adventurer who has to fight monsters and go on adventures. So Gon decides to become a hunter to find his father. Along the way, he'll meet all kinds of friends like Kilua, Karapika, and Leorio as well as predators like Hisoka. Gone. Gone. Oh, that's gonna hurt! The Hunter exam arc at the beginning is one of the best intro arcs in anime. It sets the tone immediately, seeing these children needing to take tests and be put in situations that literally have people dying is something else. Make a sound and you die. You use Nen and you die. Like, you wouldn't expect something like this that lets children get involved to have so much gruesome death, but here we are. If you behave, I'll make this quick. The fighting is exciting, the characters are all quirky and fun, the explaining and talking definitely gets annoying at times, but once the violence happens, it always hits you like a train. This kid is dangerous! Gon himself is always smiling and laughing like he should be a protagonist in a Saturday morning cartoon. Not one where his best friend rips the beating heart out of a man's chest. Oh, and the Chimera Ant arc? Yeah, I'll just leave it at that for those who know. God, Hunter x Hunter is so good, I have to make a video about it in the future. I'm becoming a hunter no matter what! Toonami presents Hunter x Hunter. Premiere Saturday, April 16th at 1. You can't spell impossible without possible on Adult Swim. There's so many amazing and beloved anime I still haven't even mentioned by name that came out during this time. My Hero Academia, Black Clover, Tokyo Ghoul, One Punch Man, Pop Team Epic. Hey, hey, are you upset? I am not upset. Hey, hey, are you upset? I am not upset. I am not. Man, this show is weird as hell. I have no idea where to even begin with it. It's just full of nonsense and cutaway gags. We follow these two girls that get put into extremely random situations. My name is Popko. I'm just your average run-of-the-mill 14-year-old 7th grader. Sometimes it's funny. Most of the times you just sat there scratching your head. Hippo. 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 Uh, I'm the hungriest hippo in the world. 
It really feels like an old school Newgrounds cartoon, just putting your OC in recognizable property so the audience goes, whoa, whoa. Choose one of these three and then you can set out on your adventure! The episodes are 30 minutes long, with the first 15 minutes being full of nonsense. But the second half of the show is literally the same exact bits as the first half, but now the two girls are voiced by brand new voice actors. Beef. Ooh, your life has been spared. Beef. Your life has been spared. If that sounds stupid, it's because it is. But hey, that's Pop Team Epic for you. I feel like if Toonami didn't exist, this show would still fit right in the Adult Swim catalog. Can you imagine seeing this at 3 a.m.? You'd probably go insane. I'm me! Heading back to the ship, Tom 5 would go on a lot of adventures, one of which being the Intruder 2. Yeah, remember the intruder that took out Tom 1? That disgusting red blob? Well, it's back with a vengeance, this time trying to steal Sarah. I have no idea why everyone wants her, but they do. The new intruder, though, also has a little surprise, literally fusing its form with Tom 1. <laughs> Man, I make a really crappy bad guy. That's right. If you remember, the intruder engulfed Tom 1, but we never really saw what happened to its body. And here, we definitely get our answer. Do you know how long I've been out there looking for you? Did you really think blowing off the engine of your ship would kill me? You can't kill me, but I can kill you. He's super powerful, even boasting about how he destroyed Tom 4. Yeah, Tom 4 was killed by the intruder. Toonami released an online companion comic called, well, The Intruder 2. Released in 2015, the comic was actually set in 2008, during Tom 4's reign, where he inevitably comes face to face with The Intruder and is destroyed. It's a solid comic, and I definitely recommend you check it out if you want to go more in-depth on the situation. The Intruder 2 ends with Tom needing to blow up his ship in order to save Sarah, and destroy The Intruder. Where for reals this time, I'm super duper sure it'll never return. So to celebrate, Tom 5 reviewed more video games, of course. Tom and I are talking about the new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. And it takes Link off in some new directions, literally. You can go anywhere and climb anything. Tom 5 had a lot of special events and miniseries, but the most important one probably being The Forge. In this special, a group of invaders ambush Tom's ship and steal Tom 5 away. Bring this unit to the ship. I'm gonna rip it apart. Circuit by circuit. It turns out his ship has been this ancient legendary weapon that these thugs are now stealing. It's a really solid miniseries. Just from the visuals alone, you can tell that there was a lot of love and care put into it. The best way would be to use my super hydraulics to break down the door, no doubt. Uh, that's obviously the spot I weakened for you, right? I also recommend checking this one out if you want the full scope of the special. However, episode 4 is what we need to focus on now, where Tom takes a stand against the intruders by himself so Sarah can save their friend that's been aboard this whole time. Where Tom 5 stands his ground, but is inevitably blasted to Kingdom Come and put out of commission. Sarah, you've always meant everything. Ending the longest reign of any Tom to ever exist. But, from the ashes of Tom 5, naturally came Tom 6. Who's cooler, sleeker, better, bigger, faster, stronger. Where him and Sarah managed to take control of the Absolution and flee from the intruders. Tom 6 made his debut on December 7, 2019, where currently to this day Tom 6 is still in commission continuing to air really awesome shows and introduce them to the world. Dr. Stone, Fire Force, Demon Slayer, and Food Wars, just to name a few. Food Wars in particular is very, uh, interesting. I've only ever seen a handful of scenes from the show, but from what I can gather, it's essentially Hell's Kitchen meets hentai? I wish I was kidding. Definitely another good fit for this Adult Swim tsunami era. 
Hell, there's even been some episodes of anime that would debut in America on Toonami, either at the same time, or even before airing in Japan in some cases. In this modern era where anime is so easily accessible through multiple streaming services, it's nice to see Toonami still has a strong fan base to keep it alive. If anything, it's this modern world that has streaming services that I would assume would kill off Toonami. But no. I know how it feels sometimes. The world can look bleak. Times can seem tough. And some days, nothing's gonna go your way. But you can't let that break you down. You can't let that change who you are. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a quitter when it comes to my dreams. Nobody puts Dandy in a corner. You're gonna have to dig deep and find that extra positivity to keep the grind from grinding you. Let's get back out there and keep fighting the fight. I am not about to give up! There's a certain warmth in my heart knowing that Toonami is still alive and kicking. So many people grew up with this channel block. It introduced anime into so many different houses throughout the years. Without Toonami, who knows how popular anime would be outside Japan once kids grew out of children's shows like Pokemon. Toonami was and is still a place you can escape to from the real world. Late at night, after a long day full of all the struggles and hardships life throws at you, once you board the Absolution, you can relax and transform into the hero you already are. So thank you for everything, Tom. And Tom too. Tom 3, Tom 3.5, Tom 4, Tom 5, and of course, Tom 6. Let me know your favorite Toonami memory down below. You've heard my story, now let me hear yours.